we have these two vertical planes and the angle between them is given as delta phi these planes are just dipped into water we need to find out at a distance x what will be the height h of the water column so if we take an element at a distance x with width dx and then let's try to find what will be the height of that element so let's write the free, free body diagram of that element so these are the forces so the surface this surface will experience a force let's say f2 so it will be towards this direction and then this surface will have the same force f2 downwards why the same because uh, the surface is continuous so the angle of both f these two forces will be at 180 to each other and because the length of these two surfaces are almost same the forces which will be surface tension times this length is same as surface tension times this length so f2 is equal to f2 downward force is of course mg where m is the mass of the element and then there are two more forces so again because of the symmetry they are same in magnitude and let's say they are f1 each now contact angle is given to us so let's say this angle is theta c and now we can write the force balance equation on this element because it is at rest so writing the force in the vertical direction 2 f1 cos theta c is equal to mg now you might be thinking uh, okay also f1 is s into dx but dx is this length and because this is an arch this length need not be same as this length so you might be wondering how we can write this as s dx so we are going to discuss this in next slide this uh, it will take some time explaining that but for now let's say 2f1 cos theta c is equal to 2s dx cos theta c is equal to mg m is rho into dv volume of this element is dx into x div delta phi into h dx into x delta phi into h times rho into g solving this we get h is constant into 1 by x so h is inversely proportional to x so you can imagine now the surf, the if you plot h versus x so this is how this curve will look like visually also and it's going to be like this now this is just a, a symbolic image then because here this is not a capillary anymore when x becomes large but this equation still holds true because when x is large this angle is still theta c and similarly this angle here will also be theta c so upward force still going to be 2 f1 cos theta c now again so how can we write f1 as s dx when dx is this length and clearly this length is different than dx so let's see that okay now this diagram might look very very complicated and it is actually because you have to visualize a lot it's not complicated in theory but uh, to vis visually see that it's going to be a take a bit of a struggle so let's see one by one everything that is represented here so we have these three diagrams this is the 3d front view of the wedge so again so if you look from here the the surface will look like this so this is again the element where the width of the element is dx so this distance is dx so this is the front view it's in 3d because we need to do that in order to understand how the force on this layer works on these two layers we have already seen forces will be f2 which will cancel out each other so we are bothering about these forces 
So this is the force SDL, where DL is the length of this surface. So again, this DL is not equal to DX. DX is this length. Okay, I just wrote it down for clarity. So this is DX, but this is the length of the surface above DX. So length of the surface above DX, so this is DL. So the force will obviously be SDL. Now, this is the three different view. And if we look at this from the right side, it's going to look like this. Where again, this is the surface, which will look like this. So it's inclined. You can see that it's coming down. So this there is incline here. This is not parallel to dx. So this is an incline and then because this is dx, this is also dx. So if you see from the right side, this distance is also dx. And if we plot coordinate axis, so let's say this is x, x is this is y and upwards is z. So SDL is going to be on the plane which is of the surface of liquid here. So we extend this surface. So this green color plane is the plane extending water surface. So of course, SDL is going to be in this plane. Now let us take another surface, which is in YZ plane. So that is this surface in red. So this is the vertical surface in YZ plane. So what we are going to do here is we are, we'll take the component of SDL in YZ plane, which will be SDL cos theta C. Because this y, this plane is at an angle theta C with the vertical plane. So the force that is lying in this plane is also at an angle theta C with the vertical plane. So this red plane is shown to be a vertical YZ plane. So the component of the actual force on YZ plane will be SDL cos theta C. So it is the component of SDL on YZ plane, but it is not in Z direction. So it's not vertically up, but it is along one. And what is one? One is the direction where the component of this SDL will fall on YZ plane. So on the direction of one, we have the component of uh, actual force in YZ plane. So the other component will be of course towards X direction. So one component is in YZ plane, which is SDL cos theta C and one component will be along X direction that will be SDL sin theta C. Now, we need the, okay, before proceeding further, let's see whatever we discussed in this diagram also, so it will be more clear. So now that we are seeing from the right side view, so we have the y axis here, z axis here, and x axis is inside the plane. So this red plane, which is in yz plane, so now it is completely lying in the yz plane. And as discussed, the component of SDL is on the yz plane, we have taken it like that. So this component of this force is actually in the yz plane, which is SDL cos theta c. So now you can see that SDL cos theta c is not in actual z direction. It's not vertically up. So that's what we have written here. Component of SDL on yz plane, that is what SDL cos theta c is. And it is not in z direction, but actually it's along direction of one. Now we want the component in Z direction because we want the force which is uh, which is uh, vertically up. So let's say the angle, uh, the Z axis makes an angle alpha with this direction of one. So by geometry, you can see that is the same angle as this. So this also alpha, this also alpha. So component of this force now on the in the z direction will be SDL cos theta c cos alpha. SDL cos theta c cos alpha. So this is finally the net 
upward force because of SDL. So first we took its component in YZ plane. Then within YZ plane, we took the component in Z direction. So those are the two steps which we have taken. So again, SDL was our original force. We broke it into two components. One is SDL cos theta C and one is SDL sin theta C, which is inside the plane. This is the other component of SDL in X direction. So now that is, so uh, our force is broken into this part and this part, but we want force in this part. So contribution of this will be zero in vertically Z direction and contribution of this will be SDL cos theta C cos alpha. Now you can see here DL cos alpha is DX. So I can replace that. So this becomes S DX cos theta C. So this is the net upward force because of SDL. And because there are two lines, net upward force because of both of them is going to be two times two DX cos theta C. So that's what we have done here two times S dx cos theta C. So this is a gross simplification, which, uh, but here it's uh, difficult to explain all that, what we explained in the next, next slide. So here let's, uh, let's just say that we are taking the component of F1 upwards, which comes to be two S dx cos theta C. So how we reached from here to here, that was explained in the last, next slide. So yeah, that's it. I will leave this here. So just uh, go through that and see if you are able to visualize what we did here. Excellent problem.